I would like to welcome you to our midweek Bible study. I believe there's spring in the air or getting closer, isn't it? Boy, we've had some nice days starting with Monday, the beautiful sunshine, and then Tuesday, and now today, where we've had warmer weather. We know the winter's still there, but we're close, getting close to the first day of spring. And uh, as we think of that, we think of new life, don't we? And tonight in our midweek Bible study, we're looking at new life, because new life is possible. New life is possible in each and every one of us. And we're looking at Titus chapter 3. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Titus chapter 3 tonight for our midweek Bible study. We'll be looking at verses 1 through verse 8. And how important it is to realize as we look at the blueprint, the blueprint that we've been looking at um, throughout this study... Uh, a blueprint is a plan, and I pray that as you've thought about those blueprints and as we've looked at different things, we've looked at where these blueprints are for our life and for the church, and how important it is that we, we follow plans, isn't it, when we're building something. Maybe you've been part of building something in your life and you've had a, a set of blueprints, or, or maybe better, maybe you've bought something that has some instructions. Well, think of those instructions much like a blueprint, a plan, and as we're looking at it spiritually, a plan for our lives, the blueprints of our lives. And we're looking at that in the book of Titus, working our way through the book of Titus. So I, I pray that this has been a, a great study for you. I know I've been challenged by this study as we saw Paul looking to get the, the church at, at Crete straightened out and, and Titus. Titus was who he chose to stay there and to work on it. And the first thing we saw in our study, and just a little bit of review, the first thing we studied was how that Paul said, Titus, you're not going to do this by yourself. There's going to be godly men that are raised up to, to work and to be part of the church. And then it gave some qualifications of those godly men. And, and I said that week when we were studying that, we need to be praying in our churches today, in our local churches, or in our churches in general, that we are praying for godly men to raise up, to rise up and to be leaders again in our churches. And then it went through with some warnings about some, some that, are, that are speaking false doctrine and, and false teachers in there and how that, that needs to be stopped and gotten out of the church. And Paul instructed on what to look for and, and how to get them out. And then we spent quite a bit of time over the past couple of weeks in looking at, well, before that, let me go back, in chapter 2, then we looked at some characteristics of each and every one of us. We looked at the older man, we looked at the older woman, woman, and then the younger woman, and then the younger man. And Paul puts out some, some uh, characteristics that as Christians that we should be willing to, to have and be willing to, to look at. And I would encourage you to go back and review that. Well, then in chapter 2, starting in verse 11, we looked quite a bit at the grace of God and the importance of the grace of God. Grace in our Christian lives and what that means and how that it, it shows up in, in many different ways. We looked at four areas over the last two weeks that God's grace is there. And, and the importance of realizing that in our lives and praising God for how His grace is evident and can be evident in our lives. Well, this week we want to move to chapter 3. And uh, just after we have a word of prayer here, we're, we want to be looking and examining the facts that a new life is possible. Maybe right now you're in that spot in your life where, boy, it just seems like you're going down a long haul and, and nothing is happening in your life. But I want you to be refreshed. I want you to be encouraged that a new life is possible. So we'll be looking at this chapter in just a minute, the first eight verses. But let's have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for our time together. We just praise you that we can come through technology and to reach out to those within our area, reach out to those that may be unable to come out on a Wednesday night. We thank you for our Bible study, dear Lord, and we've been looking at blueprints and, and the plans for our lives and for the life of the church. And 
As we look through this, we see, dear Lord Paul, pointing out to Titus some of the important areas in the, in the church, in the important areas in our lives that, as Christians, we should uh, be looking towards. But as we come to you tonight in prayer, dear Lord, we pray for the many prayer requests. We, we think of many on our prayer list that have health issues, and dear Lord, there are many there. But I also want to mention those that within our families, maybe spouses, maybe children, maybe just a person in our family, or maybe a friend or a neighbor that does not know you, dear Lord. I pray that we would be looking to be praying and, and to be encouraging and to show your love to others around us, but be concerned about the unsaved. Be concerned for those that do not know you. I pray, dear Lord, at the Mount Carmel Church that we would be willing to reach out and to to minister to many, many within our families, many within our, our neighborhoods, many within the very area that the Mount Carmel Church sits. Dear Lord, we thank you for how that you are always there for us. And dear Lord, as we reach out to others as Christians, dear Lord, I pray that we would allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. And dear Lord, I know many times we get discouraged by maybe reaching out to somebody and they, they kind of put us off. But dear Lord, help us to be, as I, I often use the term, farmers, willing to plant the seed and allow the Holy Spirit to water that seed. Dear Lord, we don't know, we don't have any idea what day it may occur or what, it, what may happen. But dear Lord, we can change lives. We can change lives by prayer and being willing to show others through our lives, through our witness to others. Dear Lord, your glory and your love that can be showed to them. We pray tonight for each and every one that, that may be thinking right now of an unsaved person in their, in their family. Dear Lord, we lift them up to you. We also thank you for the many men and women as we think of the... the the things that are going on in this world today with the threat of uh, a war, dear Lord, in the Ukraine. We pray for the uh, Ukraine, those in Ukraine that are trying to get out, the Christians that are there. And dear Lord, we just pray for wisdom. We pray for wisdom for our leadership and guidance, dear Lord. We pray that, that they would even turn back to you. We know we see a lot in the world today and a lot in our news today that, that shows that we are walking further and further away from you. But I pray, dear Lord, that there would be a softening of hearts. I pray as Christians that we would be on our knees praying, praying diligently for those in leadership, those in authority over us. And dear Lord, you're not caught off guard by where we are right now in this world. But I truly believe a lot of what has happened in this world is because we've walked away from you. And, and we learn in your word that as we get closer to the end times, there will be wars and rumors of wars and, and men, lovers of themselves, and, and much that we see taking place today. Dear Lord, I pray for each and every one listening tonight that our Bible study would be an encouragement to them, that we would see through your word how that a new life can begin, no matter where we are, no matter what has taken place in our lives. So we pray for our midweek Bible study tonight. We just pray for those watching and listening, that it would be a time of being in God's Word. I pray for open hearts. And I pray for clarity of voice on my own part. But we thank you for all that you do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, as I said tonight and next week in our Bible study, we want to examine the fact that a, a new life is possible in each and every one. So we'll be looking at Titus chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. As I was looking at this passage, you know, I, I got to thinking, you know, all over the world, when a new year is starting, and we just started a, a couple months ago, the year 2022, you know, many people look at that as being a new beginning, a, a new time to start. Even 
Some people say, well, I'm going to wipe my slate clean. I'm going to have a clean slate, and in 2022, I'm going to start anew, afresh. Well, as I was studying this week, I, I ran across a recent survey that was taken. It was taken about those that, that make uh, predictions, or not so much predictions, but make resolutions for a new year. And even though we're in it two months, I, I just wanted to share what that survey said. What well, revealed that 35% hope to lose weight, 33% want to get fit, 31% of people plan to eat healthier, and 14% want to spend more time with their friends and their family. Well, 12% of that survey were wanting to seek a better work-life balance. As I continue to read that survey that was given, you know, one of those who make what we call a, a new, res, new Year's resolution, 80% of those will have given up in less than three months. So as we are soon going to be in the month of March, that third month, that, that month after January, February, and there's March, and we're anticipating spring, you know, that means that we are closing in on those that are ready to give up. And maybe you're one of those people that say, it, this isn't worth it. I'm not going to do this anymore. And you give up. I pray that you're encouraged tonight by what we read in God's Word. That a new life is possible. You know, I don't think there is one of us that wouldn't like to make changes in our lives. And there are many people who are searching for, sometimes, an entirely new life. The problem is, as we look at the world today, those that are looking for a new life or are looking for hope in, in everywhere, they're looking all in the wrong places. So as we continue our study of the book of Titus, my desire tonight and next week is to show you that a new life is possible. You know, there is hope, just as Paul points it out to Titus in chapters 2. 3 verses 1 through 8. So I hope you have your Bibles there or an app on your phone opened up. Please follow along as I read verses 1 through 8. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness of love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. That being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. You know, in our text tonight, the Apostle Paul recalls the glorious transformation that Jesus had brought about in his life. In the passage we just read, Titus 1, 3, verses 1 through 8, we can see that new life is possible. And we want to join Paul as he continues to instruct Titus as to what should be accomplished in the church at Crete. You know, in doing that, Paul gives a great contrast. A great contrast between the old man and the new man. If you turn with me, keeping your finger in Titus chapter 3, but going to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I want to just read one verse in, check, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 
Well, let me just read down verses 17 and verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, remember that part, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You know, who better to describe the amazing transformation that Jesus can bring than Paul? Look at Paul's life. How that Paul was transformed from where he was. At one point, Paul was, his name was Saul. And he was out to, to get rid of Christians. He was out to, to make it very hard for Christians. In fact, he was killing Christians. But his story is one of great transformation, one of the greatest transformations in history. In the first few verses, he calls on Titus to remind the people of Crete of what they had previously been taught. They too had been changed by the power of Christ. But it seems that they needed a reminder. Do you ever need a reminder for something? Well, the people in the church at Crete need a reminder of certain responsibilities of their new life. In fact, in Titus chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. And then in verse 2, it says, To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. These remain still, even to this day, important instructions for each and every one of us. As Christians. You know, the culture at this time on the Isle of Crete was very hostile to the gospel. This area was corrupted and consumed by sin, but those who had been born again were expected to, to be different. Remember what we saw in, in the second chapter of Titus, verse 14? If you just turn back there again, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good work. You know, Jesus gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself, as I just read, a peculiar people, that we would be zealous of good works. In other words, be eager and anxious to complete good works as Christians, as Christ followers. You know, this passage illustrates the change that should come through each one of us as Christ. Maybe you're listening and are searching for a change. Maybe even something to change in your life, to, to make a new beginning or a new life. Well, I want to, to spread some encouragement that new life is possible and it is possible because of God's love, God's salvation, God's mercy, God's grace, and because of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Look with me at verses 3 and 4 of our passage tonight. We want to look at four different areas, and tonight we'll look at the first two. But let's, let's read verses 3 and 4. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared. A new life is possible. The first point I'd like us to see. A new life is possible because of God's love. You know, let's just admit, sometimes we can be very hard to love. And, and, and maybe you're sitting with somebody, just look to them and say, you know, there's times in your life where you can be very hard to love. But I am thankful. I am thankful for our spouses. I am thankful for others in our family who possess unconditional love. And that unconditional love for me, I think of my, my children, I think of my spouse, how that they show unconditional love for me. Isn't it something 
how your family knows you better than anyone else, and they love you. They love you in spite of yourself. They love you even in spite of, of where you may be, or maybe there's a, a turmoil right now in your family. Do you know that they still love you, no matter where you are, just as you love them? Greater than that is the fact that God knows more about you than anyone. He knows your actions. He knows your thoughts. He knows what you have done. He knows right where you are. He knows what you're going to do, and He loves you anyways. I just want to say something. That's my God. Our God is amazing. I hope that that amazing God is your God also, but He is my God. And that's something we can remember. That's my God. Our God is amazing. In verse 3 of our passage tonight, Paul paints a picture of what we were before Christ. Look at that in verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. This is a clear description of those who are without Christ, or those that, who may not be allowing Christ to shine through them. They're not Christ-like. We see that word foolish. Well, that word foolish means to be ignorant concerning the things of God. We see the word disobedient. One who is rebellious towards God. We see deceived. That word deceived. Continually led deeper and deeper into sin by allowing Satan into our lives. We see serving lusts, serving divers' lusts and pleasures. That's one who is a slave to the desires of the flesh. We see living in malice. This refers to a lifestyle of evil, not walking where God wants us to walk. We see that word envy, always grasping for more and desiring what others have. In other words, being envious of what our neighbor may have or someone else in our family. We see the word hateful. One who is mean-spirited and hard to get along with. Then we see that, that phrase, hating one another. Walking without love for your fellow man. Maybe walking without love for a, a spouse or walking without love for a, a family member. You know, I don't know about you, but to me that describes someone who is very hard to love. But notice what Paul says in verse 4. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, towards man appeared. This means in spite of who you are, and what you've done, and despite of where you are, God loves you. God knows us, yet He loves us enough to send His only begotten Son to make a way for us to one day be with Him. You know, Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 says, But God commandeth His love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, what happened? Christ died for us. He died for you and me. You know, a new life is possible because of God's love. Scripture also tells us that a new life is possible because of God's salvation. Look with me at, at the end of verse 5, where it says, By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Salvation. Salvation is rescue from harm. It's rescue from destruction. It's, re it's rescue from danger. You know, that is what God did for us through the sacrifice of His Son. Through what His Son, Jesus Christ, did on the cross for us. You know, there was a great penalty due as a result of our sins. But God sent Jesus, His Son, to pay that sin debt to save us. We were all destined for hell, and Jesus came and made a way of escape for us. You know how important that is for us to think in our lives, and I, I just want to take a moment. Have you done that in your life? Have you asked forgiveness of sin in your life, and, 
knowing what was done on the cross through the shed blood and ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, having faith and trust in who he is and who he can be. Notice in verses 5 and verse 6 what salvation through Christ did for us. It tells us in those passages that we were lost. We were lost. He saved us. We were defiled. He washed us clean. We were dead. And he made a new way for regeneration, changing us. We were empty. He filled us with his spirit, the renewing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And as Christians, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. You know, everything that we received in salvation came through God's sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. Notice verse 6. Which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. If you are saved today and are watching today and you are saved and know Jesus Christ is your Savior, it is because of Jesus' sacrifice. If you have not been saved, I want you to know that Jesus went to the cross for you also. He has made a way for you to have a new life. And that new life starts with a new birth that brings salvation. Maybe you're watching today as a Christ follower and you say, I, 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 I've stalled out. Please understand there is no better time than right now to start anew, to start afresh. Or maybe it's a time in your life where you've been struggling with a family member or whoever it is and you haven't been Christ-like. You're, you're a lot like what we see in the first part of this chapter 3, putting them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. But then as we, we read down through that, we see for we ourselves also were sometimes in verse 3, foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. You know, there's no better time than turning around. We have a, a, a monthly time where we meet in a small group as men called Man Up. It's a time where we study God's Word and, and we've been looking at the life of Samson. And, and on Saturday we were challenged, this past Saturday, challenged it. It's Samson and the life of Samson, and we were looking at the, the passage in Judges 15 and chapter 16 that talked about his time, uh, Samson's time with Delilah, and how that that just didn't happen where he lost everything. We lo he lost all his strength and power, but there were many steps that led up to that, and I, I like to think of the Christian life sometimes as, as steps, and which way are we headed towards? In Samson's case, he was headed away from God. And tonight, if you're that person, you're that Christian, it's kind of went away from God, kind of started to go towards the world, it's never too late to turn around. It's never too late to turn around because Christ is right there. We serve a Savior that will never leave us nor forsake us. I pray that you know Him tonight. Tonight, as we looked at... Just two possible things as we look at it. The importance of realizing that we can have new life. We can have new life in Christ. As we looked at, it, at verses 1 through verse 8, and we looked at the first two of those, how important it is to realize that a new life is possible because of God's salvation. We also want to wanted to see because new life is possible because of God's love. How much He loved us. And no matter where we are, no matter what we've done, He loves us. So I pray tonight that you were challenged with those two points, that a new life is possible because of God's love, and a new life is possible because of God's salvation. Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? Are you, are you looking for that new life? Or maybe you know of somebody that's looking for hope. Well, as we look in chapter 3 of Titus, we see that. We see where that new life is through God's love, and that new life can be found through salvation, knowing Jesus Christ is our Savior. Do you know Him today? I pray that you do. Let's close in a word of prayer.
Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we could spend in your word, and we thank you for these first two things as, as we look at how we can have new life. New life is possible. New life is possible for each and every one of us. First of all, if we're a Christian, a Christ follower, to, to look, at, we had new life, but many times we get stale, we get stagnant, and, and we're looking for, for more new life, and we can find new life through the love that was shown to us. By showing that love to others. By having that joy and peace in our lives that only can be through you. We also see that we can have new life through salvation. Dear Lord, I pray that those watching and listening tonight have accepted you as their personal Savior. I pray that they've, in their life at some point, made a decision to follow you. Many times we get discouraged this time of year, this time of winter. And dear Lord, I pray that we reflect tonight and praise you of the new life that we can have as a Christ follower. But I also pray, dear Lord, for that person that may not know you, that there is no better time than tonight to ask you to be their Lord and Savior. We thank you for our time tonight in your word, dear Lord, and we just pray that we would go back and, and digest it, look at it even more, as Paul was pointing out to Titus, the importance of the Christian life the importance of things in our lives, knowing that we can have a new life in you. We thank and praise you for all that you do and can do in our lives. Help us to allow you, help us to let you in. Help us to let you be first in our lives. We thank you for tonight, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for watching and listening tonight. I just want to encourage you that we can have new life. No matter where we are in life, we can have new life through Jesus Christ. I pray that you know Him today. I'd just like to encourage you to, to be in God's Word. I'd like to encourage you to be part of a church family. A Bible-believing church is so important to to grow together in fellowship, to grow together spiritually. If you don't have a church family, we would love to encourage you to become and to be part of the Mount Carmel Church. We're located at 3023 Clover Run Road, Mahaffey, Pennsylvania. Our phone number is 814-277-4435. My name is Pastor Brian. I would love to spend time talking to you about how that you can find new life. Or maybe you have a question about the church. We'd love to answer that question or talk to you about it. But we want to thank you for watching and listening tonight. And may God bless.